What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. It's time for a Teen Mom 2 Season 8 Episode 5 Recap. The episode quickly starts off with Janelle and David spending some time away from their newborn daughter to celebrate their engagement and plan for their wedding. Mind you, Ensley was only about a week old at this time when they decided to spend about three nights away from her. Let that sink in. So anyway, Janelle says that this is her first engagement where she's not worried about anything, which really does say a lot because she's been engaged like a thousand times. And then she tells David, that her mom should be happy for her and willing to help wedding plan, which is kind of weird because, like I said, she's been engaged about a thousand times. So how many times can she expect her mother to take her engagements seriously and actually help her plan for weddings? Like this would be a full-time job. Next up, Leah takes Ali to a physiotherapy appointment and then heads over to the gym to shoot an infomercial for her latest pyramid scheme. Over in Florida, Nova tells her family that she wants straight hair and they tell her that curly hair is beautiful and unique, which is actually a really gorgeous teaching moment that couldn't have really happened with any of the other girls. Um, I feel like, you know, Brianna and Nova's addition to this cast is very, very well needed um, in terms of representation because it's a conversation that so many young girls of color go through. And I know I went through it too, uh, wanting straight hair for like the longest time ever. Now in Petty Betty's world, she calls Joe to tell him about the PFA that she filed against um, Javi and he seems to be irritated with her. And then she later says that Javi needs to agree to her terms uh, or abuse will go on his record for life. It was a really ironic conversation because she has done the same thing to Joe before and she seems to be using PFAs to get baby daddies to stop talking to her, not to actually protect herself from abuse, which is quite sad. Back over in Florida again, the De Jesus family sits down for lunch and talks about Nova's insecurities right in front of her um, at the table as they chew with their mouths wide open. Brianna adds that Nova would be more okay with her black features if she were you know able to spend time with more people who look like her meaning that she does need to spend more time with Devon's family and he needs to be more present to make that happen for her and then Leah's pyramid of lipsticks come in the mail and she is so excited and she suddenly becomes a YouTube beauty guru of some sort as she flips on her little iPhone puts it on the kitchen table and starts filming tutorials of how that stuff does not come off no matter how hard you try who knew that would be an appealing selling feature I would hate that wouldn't you cause wrinkles to your mouth trying to remove an almost permanent lipstick. To celebrate the hard day's work, she heads out for coffee where she gets a call from Corey explaining that Addie's too tired to go tumbling and they make plans to remove her from the class. Now, Barbara and Jace head over to the land before time to visit Ensley and Janelle talks to Jace about the way that he's been treating Barbara. Apparently he hit Barbara and Janelle lets him know that if he does stuff like that, he will eventually go to jail. And like, take it from the expert Jace, she has got got the mug shots to back up the fact that she knows what lands people in jail. Barbara then sees Janelle's engagement rank and then chuckles like the rest of us uh, before calling it beautiful. So something that was quite troubling about all of this was that Barbara lets Janelle know that she had to go to the doctor to check out her nose and she took Jace with her, okay? And so the doctor started speaking to Jace and the doctor, I believe it was she, was like, Jace, you really, really hurt your grandma. Like, you really hurt her when you hit her. Do you feel bad about this? And Jace was like, no. And then the doctor tried asking the same question in a different way. Like, are you sure you don't feel bad? Like, you know, this is your grandma. You love her. She takes good care of you. She's hurt because of you. Do you feel bad? And apparently he said no yet again. And so things took a really ominous turn at this point because Barbara's like, listen, the doctor was so concerned about the fact that he does not seem to feel compassion or remorse for his actions. And y'all, I don't like to talk about the children too, too, too much, but we all know what people who lack basic empathy are called. And let's just hope that Barbara and Janelle do follow through on therapy for Jace because it is really sad. I think this is one of those nature versus nurture debates where it kind of swings a lot more towards nurture in my humble opinion like seeing the things this young child has gone through with these women is absolutely insane and it's not shocking to see that he has been you know quite affected by it and on top of that the the Evans family seems to have a running list of all sorts of you know 
health issues. So it's really not shocking on the nature front either, but good luck to Jace regardless. Do any of you guys feel like that was a little bit too serious and personal and damaging to air on TV? Now, Chelsea gets an email from her lawyer saying that Adam wants to lower child support and finds out that Taylor's going through the same thing. She lets her dad know that Adam now has to take drug tests to see Paisley and Randy asks if they'll test for steroids. Shady, shady, Randy. Meanwhile, Javi's out of friends, so JC heads over to his house late into the night to discuss the PFA that um, Kale had filed against him and Javi's like, listen, it is such BS. I've never done a single thing to her and honestly, she is low for doing this to me career-wise. Um, this could damage my son and I will never ever speak to her about anything other than Lincoln after this whole ordeal and I absolutely do not blame him one bit. Kale, on the other hand, calls Sterling to talk about Javi's lawyer doesn't want her to carry through with the PFA, but she says maybe Maybe he'll take her seriously now that she's taken things that far mind-blowing right things are getting pretty serious here you guys as Devon and his trademark extra small sweater head on over to his friend Dre's house and they talk about how far away Nova is from his house and Devon says he likes how Brittany's family welcomes into him into their home but he hates that he only gets to see Nova in their living room and he wants to take her places and like to his house and stuff like that but it's kind of like you could easily fight that in court that's not a standard um, parenting practice it's probably because there are some major concerns surrounding yourself and he also complains that Nova doesn't get to see his side of the family as often as she should and again I'm saying I'm pretty sure there are some sort of grandparent rights here and I also am pretty sure that Brianna would be comfortable with allowing Devon to have supervised visitation at his mother's house so if his mother really did or even his father really did want to see Nova and spend more time with her it would be possible I I've seen men fight for their kids a lot harder than this guy has. He's complaining about, you know, it being an hour long drive. Meanwhile, Joe literally moved states to be closer to his child. So let's not play this game, Devon. The five hour court session between Kale and Javi results in Javi signing a consent PFA without searching for abuse and calls Kale a piece of S-H-I-T. Kale calls Sterling to tell her about how Javi agreed to it and the terms which include possible criminal conviction if he talks to her about anything other than Lincoln for a year. Now, Nathan and his friend who I absolutely adore I'm pretty sure he reads all the Teen Mom blogs, Reddits, like Tumblrs, you name it, and um, just says everything that we say up on the show for us. It's hilarious. Anyway, the two of them get together to talk about Janelle's latest engagement and baby. Same thing, different year, right? Um, Nathan goes, what kind of a name is Ensley? Is that like... What, what was that country he said? Polish or something like that? And I found it pretty ironic considering he has a son with Janelle called Kaiser, which is a type of bread. The friend also laughs about how Ensley was only six days old when Janelle left her to go get engaged for a couple of days. And um, speaking of Janelle, she and David take Barbara to tour their new home, which looks absolutely huge, especially to be one of those prefabs or whatever. She's come so far from the girl living in poverty, and it's sad to think of how she is going to lose so much of all of this to David pretty soon. At some point, Jace took his beating talent over to his cousin Gabriel and Janelle forced him to apologize before we flip on over back to Leah again. Leah talks to Allie about quitting tumbling and Gracie says it's dumb that Allie wants to quit and kind of implies that Allie is lazy and Leah rightfully scolds her for criticizing her sister so harshly. She tells her that Allie can do whatever she wants because tumbling is hard for her and what's for Gracie is not for everybody else. We all have our different strengths and weaknesses. Bad grammar aside, it was a really beautiful moment uh, between Leah and her girls. These are the teaching moments that we live for on the show, right? Anyway, Devon heads over to Brianna's house to talk about her latest pregnancy and his bad parenting. Brianna tells Devon that Nova's having issues with being the only black girl in her family and how she needs him and his family to step up so that she feels better about herself and understands herself a lot more because they can't really teach her about being, you know, a black woman, right? Devon seemed really uncomfortable with the conversation. He wasn't really all that engaged with it or anything like that. I don't know if it's the subject matter that made him feel really stressed out or if it's the fact that he's wearing an extra small sweater when I'm pretty sure he should be wearing at least a large considering how tall he is. Um, but anyway, as soon as Nova comes back home, he does this little hide and seek thing with her. And the first thing he tells 
her is that her hair is absolutely beautiful. And in the last scene of the episode, Chelsea's court date with Adam actually gets canceled and she reveals that Adam tested positive for both methamphetamines and amphetamines as well. Meth is one nasty drug, you guys. I'm pretty thankful that they are not filming him this season. I'm sure he would scare the bejesus out of us. It is really sad to think though that he has two young daughters who this is affecting very, very greatly. We all know that this is affecting Paisley a lot more than it's affecting Aubrey for now anyway, based on reports. I've done a video on it before that you can uh, find on my channel where uh, Taylor wanted to get some kind of counseling for Paisley because she started acting really like erratic and like stressed out uh, because she might have seen Adam in this really messed out state allegedly and he actually refused to get her any kind of counseling for it which is quite disgusting but we'll see how all of this plays out throughout the season what did you guys think of this episode of Teen Mom 2 make sure to leave all your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below and as usual we'll chat you can also like this video subscribe for more feel free to share it with your friends as well and follow me across social media where I absolutely love chatting with you. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.